Today we are here for a live stream where I'm all live in front of you here. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully we have a little bit more, uh, or I guess a little bit less mishaps than what we had last time I live streamed. And that was maybe what, three, four months ago at this point. Anyway, it's been a while since then. And if you watched that last one, you noticed that this Atherin boxcar just came apart on us several times and that was fun. Either it just fell off the front or fell off over to the side. That was a lot of fun, but not really. <laughs> and so today we are here to back to run more trains. And I obviously have a larger selection than what I had earlier. And so I'll just open up this drawer here now. I added a drawer down here, or just for live streams to make it easier. You can see the selection of engines, even the small ones behind there. And I believe underneath there's another row of steam locomotives and the B unit to the Erie built. So I'll be testing out how this system works now for picking out locomotives. Obviously there are cabooses up here for easy access for setting them up to run with trains. As per usual, we have our normal setup locomotives here. So I'm just waiting for you guys to request a locomotive, or I can just get one started off either way. It doesn't matter to me that much. And so we also do have these passenger cars. I'll grab them real quick. That was a lot easier than I thought to grab. But here these are. They are Milwaukee Road heavyweight coaches, as well as two Santa Fe heavyweight coaches. They're, this, these ones are River Rossi, the other ones are AHM. And so coming up in February here, I'll be doing another collection video on all my trains. I seem to do that just on Valentine's Day. I don't know why I picked that date, but I just keep on doing it. So you'll expect to see another one there. And so, uh, let's see, let's just get a locomotive running. Let's pick this Santa Fe one here. And it has been, I don't know, maybe two months since I've run this locomotive. It's been sitting out on the layout for quite a while now, but it of course has not run. So let's just set it on the inner line here. If you guys do want an extra look at the trains you can pick out as well, feel free just to remind me in the chat and I'll show you guys. But this is an Atherin Blue Box unit, an early one. And so it does actually have some damage on the inside here. But I seem to fix that up in a little restoration video I did of it. Set it off and forwards here. And this locomotive also does have a tendency to tilt a little bit just on the curves. It's kind of funny. Almost like an Acela Express or anything like that. Let's see what's in motion here. Can I grab the Santa Fe caboose and throw that on the end? There you go. You can see it in the background. This one is a little bit harder to control speed-wise. It's either this speed or the speed it was at earlier. And so let's see if I can throw on the boost. There we go. All right, now I'll set it back off a little bit faster. There we go. If you guys want to pick out a locomotive for the outer line here, you can do that, or I can pick one too. It's nice to see this. U-boat running again. It never really ran well at the slower speeds, but it's one of my earlier locomotives that I got. And aside from the GG1 that is kind of hiding back there, um, that was my first general electric locomotive. Pull this out a little bit so you guys can see it a little easier. There we go. All right, that's a little bit better. I hope the sound of the train isn't that loud. What era do I model? Uh, pretty much 1940s to 1970s-ish. That's what most of my locomotives are. That's what I try to stick to. I, don't, I try not to have any modern cars or anything on the layout or anything like that. And so that's generally what the easiest to find for what I have right now. 
Obviously, I do have some steam locomotives, so that is kind of why it lowers it a little bit, but generally that's the area I model, or the era I model. I guess sometimes it is harder to find the early, early stuff, you know, the 1800s locomotives. Those are a little bit harder to find and more expensive, so I don't model that because I don't have the money for that. I am planning about making this live stream about two, two hours maybe. And so that's a good amount of time to give each locomotive its own little spotlight and just kind of not make this dragging on and on and on. Do I have a big boy locomotive? No, I do not. But I am planning on getting a, a Southern Pacific cab forward. I think it's an AC-10 technically. So I'll be getting that soon. I don't know, maybe in February, I believe. I'm getting it from uh, one of my <laughs> dead uncles or dead great uncles, just like I got some of my other locomotives. Now it's just, this time it's on the other side of the family, but yeah. Getting a few Penzi locomotives from him too, which is nice. He's the only, you know, Penzi I have is just Amtrak and I don't think that truly counts that much. Fixing my water tower here, this little cattywampus. I guess, similarly to a big boy, I guess, is the largest steam locomotive I have right now, which is a Bachman Northern. I believe it's a Northern, not a Mountain. I get those confused a lot. But right now, I've had a video restor restoring this locomotive. But after I fixed it all up, something else cracked on the inside that I have to fix now too, and that happened like a week after. And I was, so this is still in repair, so this locomotive will not be running today. So yeah, both of my Bachman split chassis locomotives are not actually gonna be running. And that's just a testament to kind of the poor quality of them. All right, I'm slow down there, trying to fail a little bit. There we go. Yeah, see, it, I only move it about, what, 10 degrees, not even 10 degrees on the controller, and it slows down that far. So, yeah, I guess that's, what, 40%, not 40, about 30% power. So, yeah, <laughs> slows down real quick. Jeez, it's almost... It's almost going to a stop here. It's slowing down even more. At least I can hear that on my end. Three viewers. All right, if you guys want to pick out another locomotive to run on the outer line here, we have all the ones up top, as well as our drawer down here. Our drawer is plural. But there's a few F units, GP35. Can't remember what that one is. A shark nose, a few Alco locomotives, and a German locomotive, as well as an Erie built down there. Just give me the word and I'll put it on the layout. Why not have a steamer on the outside loop? All right, that works. I just gotta. Uh, the steamer's fun, just sec. The farther one is a Varney, the closer one is a Tyco. They both are not the greatest reliable runners. So circuits, considering the fact that they're older than my parents. Uh, just sec. I'm going to have to grab a car for the Tyco because it has a tendency to pull out couplers. I will not say what state I live in. <laughs> But my, rail, my railroad represents several, I don't know, things I've seen across the many states that my family comes from. So the Tyco obviously has horn hooks. 
And I guess I can grab a Union Pacific caboose for it. I only have one. At this point, I thought I'd actually have more since this was the first caboose I ever got. Let's hook that up at the rear here. I guess that's out of camera for you guys. But let's pick up the locomotive. I want to give this locomotive a little bit of a warm up since again it's been a little while since I've ran this one. Right, it's all on the track. No, it's not. I guess I'm technically not running in the correct official direction. Right, it's out of shot for you guys, but I'll try to back it up for you. Is it coupled up? Oh, on one car it is. Yeah, the owner before me with this Union Pacific locomotive glued the rear coupler so it doesn't actually pivot. And so I found that this Burlington route boxcar works well. The fact that it swings really wide. I believe it is an AHM boxcar. You can see it in the distance. Today the headlight decided not to work on the steamer. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I always find that interesting. If you guys want to replace the inner line, we can do that too. Since that Santa Fe locomotive has been running for almost 10 minutes now. Actually, probably over that now. Let's see if I can get the steamer a little bit faster. Oops, I tapped the wrong controller. There we go. Now it's more like an express freight. Santa Fe on the inner line is getting a little warm, so I'm gonna take that one off. It does have a tendency not to overheat that much, but when it's in constant running for, you know, almost 13 minutes now, that's kind of what happens. Always like these live streams since I get to run combinations of trains I don't normally get to run. But now let's pull off the Santa Fe here, so let's try to stop it, I don't know, maybe about the middle of the camera. There we go. All right. You have done your service for the day with your KD couplers, because I don't believe I, these are original couplers on this locomotive. Let's see if I can set it back properly. Oop, I'll take off the Santa Fe caboose again. It is also interesting how the steamer does speed up around the curves and then slow down around the straights sometimes. Other times it's kind of inconsistent. But it is decently powerful for the size it is. It's a lot of die cast as well. I guess I never, I don't know if I ever told this or not, but I guess it would be you know, about a year ago. I got these hoppers in a set of three. The other two don't have their coal loads in and they're running behind the steam locomotive here. I was planning on doing a video about putting these together, but that kind of went south, so I never ended up putting that together. And I think all the footage of it has been deleted. But there you go, a little bit of behind the scenes content. content. If we want to run another locomotive, just go ahead and give the word. If you want to run a passenger train too. If 
forgot to grab these earlier, I guess, too, when I was showing off the passenger cars I have. I also have these two Superliners, but I really don't have any true Amtrak locomotives to run them behind. These are Walther's cars from the 90s, I believe, if it'll focus. I don't know if it is right. I have those two if you want to request those just as a running set. I'll probably run them either with the GG1 or the C430. And now the steam locomotive in the background is... There we go. It's just slowed on down. There we go. About a millimeter of millimeter or two millimeters of movement on the controller, and it speeds up just like that. Always interesting that one. I also have this container rack. I only have one of these. It's kind of sad and depressing. Except I really can only run them on the outer line, since the inner line's curves are pretty sharp. So this will t tend to derail. All right, now for the inner line, let's let this Santa, another Santa Fe locomotive go here. This is an Alco unit. This one is not the strongest puller, so let's see what it does with this kind of shorter train. Pull it all by. Set it on the other end here. Okay. Yeah. Hook it up. Oops, still off a little bit. Hook it up here. There we go. Let's see how well it can do. It's not the strongest of pullers. Let's see, you shouldn't see the light come on before anything. Yeah, just I suspect this is a little too heavy. Take some cars off the end here. Slide them into the siding. They almost all fit. That's all right. There you go. Now, let's see. Set it off and forwards. I think it should be able to all four cars, if not. Really does need a push start, though. There we go. All right, and now it's off. You see it in the background now. I think I'll pull the steamer off after this. There you go. Now the Santa Fe is definitely sped up. You can see that. Yep, the steamer's coming down to a crawl a little bit, so I'll speed her up just around the corner and take her off. All right, let's take this one off. If you guys want to suggest another loco to put on, you're more than welcome to. Santa Fe is definitely sped up now. There's also these locomotives down here to pick from. These diesels as well as a German steam locomotive, and these two steamers don't actually run. And this is just a B unit. I guess you, you can suggest that if you just want to run a B unit. All right, I'm gonna slow down the Alco because that is ripping through now. It always takes a little time before it warms up, gets enough momentum. That one has some uh, cracked wheels I need to deal with. I remember one of my, well, it would be the earliest video I did on the channel that's out right now, is <laughs> the speed test. And so I did time some of these locomotives, seeing how fast it could actually go around just a loop. Of course, that was a more basic loop before I even had the grass mats or anything else down like that. 
try to do something not Santa Fe because I've done two Santa Fe's in a Union Pacific. So let's see what we got. Now uh, let's see how the shark nose is doing today. Yeah, my first Tyco power torque. Yeah, that's always always fun. I guess my first working Tyco power torque, <laughs> the 1776 one, is uh, kind of a lost cause at this point. Its motor's definitely bad, and its, its gears are gone, too. So that's not great. Let's put a caboose on this train here, on the outer line. I always find it interesting that Tyco chose to make a shark nose for the Burlington Northern. Even though they never had any. Need a conversion car. I have three conversion cars, and one of them is Santa Fe, so it's always interesting when I have to use this one for a non Santa Fe train. Let's set it off. That's fine. Now let's try that again. There we go. All right, now it's off. Now we just got two Tycos running. All right, let's try to do some tracking chats here. Let's see how well my camera skills are. This tripod is a little stiff. So I gotta loosen up if I wanna do some better tracking shots. All right, now the shark nose is speeding up. So I'm gonna slow her down just a little bit. And all these Tycos, once they get warmed up, they really start rocketing. Just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, let's see how well I can track in the background here. I will be getting a new station over in second C point, right where my finger is. I'm getting a new station over there. And that is coming with a lot of other things, other locomotives, other cars I'm getting from my late great uncle. And also right now I have a Lionel Railroad Crossing sign. I guess I just realized that it is upside down. I don't know if I want to do anything with that yet. I've had this for a while now, but I finally brought it up to this room. And so, probably should fix it up a little bit. It's not running properly, or it doesn't, you know, flash. And so, that's there for now. And I do actually have a sign set up in the background just to fill some blank space back there. I'll go fix that railroad crossing sign now. There. All right, now let's take a look. All right, now that's better. <laughs> that actually says what it needs to say. All right, now I'm gonna pull off the Santa Fe on the inner line here. So that's that's gonna run for a little while. Put this one back in storage. Since this one actually runs properly.
Oh. Looks like the shark nose needs a little bit more weight to its nose. So it literally just spun out on the corner over here. It just, it just started spinning and it wasn't moving anywhere. All right, I'm gonna close this drawer here. You wanna get another loco, that's good. Yeah, there you go. You can see it in the background a little bit spinning out. Just always interesting because it has even more wheels. But it spins out even faster. I don't know. That's just interesting. Speaking of interesting, let's get a little guy out of the way. Let's pull out this dude. See how much power he has. Yeah, okay, I'm going to pull that shark nose off because it keeps spinning out. There we go. Now we're quiet. All right, let's pull a out the little hustler switcher here, try to get it on the inner line. Those cars are derailed. It should be able to pull this small train. If not, we have other issues. Actually, first I'm gonna get it warmed up a little bit. This one takes some time. Oh, see, yep, there we go, cuts out. Now let's send this one off forwards. With enough speed to get it over the points and that's it really. All right, I'm gonna try to drive the shark nose in. Pull the rest of your train in. This guy today just wanted, I guess, just to do some burnouts. Just sit on the track and try not to go anywhere, I guess. All right, put him back. Storage here. If you guys want to pick out another locomotive out of here or over in the other area, you can just see there. I can zoom in too if you need me to. There we go. Now the hustler's up and running. It's funny because that locomotive is just as powerful as something, you know, twice its size. Maybe not that fast. We can try to slow it down just a little bit. If you guys want to suggest another locomotive to run, I'm more than happy to take your suggestion or any questions that aren't like trying to dox me. Go. All right, we're about a quarter into the live stream here. I'm gonna let this guy rip around a little bit. I'm gonna go get some more water. I'll be back. That's as fast as it goes. You know, okay. Let's see. Okay, well, that's as fast as it goes now. It's funny on camera; it looks a lot slower than it looks <laughs> than it looks like it's actually going here. All right, that's enough of that for this one. And it stops.
This one stops pretty quick because of its rubber bands underneath. This is my only band drive locomotive. I do have spare bands. I used uh, braces bands, you know, the things they put in your teeth, or I guess you put, and I just put them on the rollers here. Those worked pretty well. You can see the engine on the inside of there, or the metal of it. So it stops really quick. There's a lot of tension and friction between the rollers and the motor on the inside. But it is one cool little locomotive, even though it is pretty fictional. All right, now I'm still open to suggestions about what locomotive to run next. See if I can fit the hustler rack in the drawer down here. Do have another small Tyco switcher. It's not as small, but yeah, it's a Plymouth one. Let's take this guy off. This box car keeps having some coupling troubles, and I only run it with one specific steam locomotive back there. I guess putting all my black locomotives next to each other probably wasn't a great idea, since you can hardly tell between all of them. You also have the entire Campbell soup train set up with the box cars, the caboose, the locomotives in the drawer here. I guess I probably could just keep it all in here and free up a space in here. But I can run all that too. That one's fun to set up. If you guys got any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I think here, the next one, I'm gonna run, let's see, one of my more, I guess, quote unquote, rare locomotives. Got the piece of track it's on too. There's a story about that. This is a GP20, Tyco GP20. I've heard online that it's fairly rare. This is an early one. I guess Tyco Manta was the technical term for it. Runs pretty well. I believe the light works. This one actually does crawl decently, unlike some of my other Tycos of the same vintage. And let's put it on the outer one. The Illinois Central Hopper. Have the train run in the actual right direction this time. There you go. So, there we go. All right, let's set it off and forward, see how it does. It might help if I use the right controller. So I can hear it buzzing before it actually did want to move. There we go, now it's off. Try to get up another train set up on the other line. This one's decently quiet as well, which is nice. These hoppers back on for anything a little bit stronger. There we go. We also do some tracking shots. Uh, the only essential here. This piece of Bachman Easy Track is my first attempt at ballasting. Most of it broke off of the sides here, so I just left it in the middle. This is using Woodland Scenics and a kind of Elmer screw, like substitute kind of concentrate thing. And so, I'm unsure if I want to do it to the whole layout yet, but I got this when I bought the hopper at my local, or it's close to local, Hobby Town. So, yeah, that's, I'm unsure if I want to ballast everything yet to just, before I get a full concrete setup for the outer and inner lines here. But that is my first test for now. And there we go. The GP20 decided it wanted to speed itself up or at least get louder. There we go. 
I, I love these old Tycos. They're just so funny when they speed up. Fell on the ground. Okay. The well car fell on the ground. Did more than fall on the ground. Just set it back here for now. All right, let's try to get some tracking shots of the locomotive here. Try to get it in the distance. Going in between the newly painted hills. I guess newly as in a month. This one is a decent puller for its size, which is also nice. Oh, it's good to see you back. It's good to see you. Yeah, I always appreciate comments like that. Yeah, I understood what you meant. Northern, not a... I guess I don't know what that wheel arrangement would be called, a 480. It's not a Mikado, it's not <laughs> consolidation, yeah. A while ago, I downloaded an image, like off the internet, just just as a um, chart for all of the possible combinations or the common combinations. So I don't try to slip up on misnaming a ten wheeler versus a you know Mikado or a Northern to a Mountain to a all those fun names that we assign. You know, but even though there's Niagara's and Northerns, but they're the same practically. It's just one railroad decided to be different. Speaking of ten wheelers, let's see how this let's see how this ten wheeler is gonna do. This is a Bowser unit. I do have them kind of semi perini coupled together. And so oh, there's just a paper clip actually holding the two of them together. And so sometimes this locomotive decides it wants to run, sometimes it doesn't. So he's luck of the draw. It will do better on the outer line. But I think it should do fine on the inner line here. If, yeah. I have a restoration video on this locomotive, but that was pretty early on into my YouTube stuff, so my restorations aren't that great from them. And also I've done just a lot of work on this locomotive throughout time, and I just haven't put that in a video. So like the part two I talk about in that video has effectively already happened just over time. There we go. There we go. All right, it's coupled up to the inner line over here on the side out of camera. About two rail. All right, set her off forwards. That way. Yeah, there we go. Has a lot of torque, which is nice, but sometimes it when it derails, it doesn't stop. It's going to derail itself over here, sorry. All right, you're all on the track. There we go. All right. Let's see if it wants to go now.
Yeah, it is a 484. Why are you clicking? There's making a funky clicking sound. What's going on with that? And you got derailed over the point. I swear sometimes this locomotive would run better even without its pilot truck. What are you? No, no. All right, why are you being temperamental? There's a reason I haven't done a lot of steam locomotive running session videos. And so, this is the reason why this locomotive decides I want to run for three laps, or sometimes just one lap, and poop out and get caught on something. See how slow it can poop? A couple? You are. You getting caught on the point? Okay. There we go. Alright, can I run the 484? Well, <laughs> I can and I can't. I get it out. So. I got it glued up, I got it fixed up, it ran well for about a week, and now the inner gear here has shattered even more. Everything else is fine, I even cleaned up the motor a bit too, and now it's just really being a fun piece of work. So yeah, it's just, it's really just a shattered gear inside. Let's say you decide, okay, uh, yeah, so it's just really stripped up. Okay, so if I either find a replacement, that's how I'm going to be able to fix this one. Or this might just become a pretty background piece. <laughs> so, yeah, I have the... Okay, well, that's never happened before. I've never had that fall out. But, yeah, I have some of the screws taped out because I kept working on it so much that I didn't want to keep undoing things. Those parts, I tested them with and without them. They still ran without it. Yeah, it'll just, it'll run, but it won't actually go anywhere. It'll just spin in place. And like, okay. yeah, Mr. Unpainted Tender here is going to go back in his little resting area. Right. Yeah. I'll get you on the tracks later. It's always fun cleaning up after the live streams. So we so say hello from Finland. Well, that's a far away place from where I am. Jeez. You close to Helsinki, or I mean, that's the only place I know in Finland. <laughs> All right, I want to get another locomotive run in on the inner line here. We can do that too. And so I have locomotive sitting over there, and I also do have my fun little drawer here. drawer here holds a bunch of fun little diesels and then the bottom drawer here if you if you really want to run a b unit by itself you can or we have this little uh, fun german locomotive let's just use those words to describe it i'm not even what's the word again All right, I still, <laughs> I'm not going to try to figure out where that is, but yeah, it's very interesting. It's, it's always interesting to have international people to watch you, you know, especially with a, a channel this small. I think it's what, 60% of my demographic is the U.S. and the rest is India, like Great Britain, yeah, other places in Europe like that too. Speaking of you know, Bachmann locomotives again, this one actually does work. All of my other Bachmanns work except for the steamers. That's always fun. 
This one actually has, I think I can crack it open and show you guys. Hello from Canada. Okay. Uh, yeah. This one's, its shell is really thin, so I always feel like I'm going to break it. So it's... Why'd you stop? Oh, sorry. It got real quiet. Cut out. <laughs> Always scares me when I'm live streaming and something just stops. You know, either I have flashbacks from the last live stream where a boxcar fell off the table and like shattered. On the inside of this loco, I have a bunch of quarters taped in a brick for extra weight. Yeah. It's a. This is. This is my first locomotive ever, and I wanted to give it some extra weight and pulling power since I knew its motor could take it. And that's the easy way I decided to do that. All right, I'm gonna take that Illinois Central off because it's been running for some time here. But then we can set this Bachman on. Oh, the track is still alive. This one has a lot of power, but its shell is super thin, so you can see the light right through it. All right, let's set her up. There you go. Yeah, it does have the bad pancake motors, but <laughs> it's split or it's not split chassis, so it runs it runs better than the two steamers I have that are Bachman. I believe the uh, I believe it's an AC ten, AC twelve, maybe. I I'm getting from uh, my. Uh, uh, late uncle's estate I believe that's a River Rossi and that's my first time that'll be my first time trying out one of those locomotives set this Tyco back where it came from yeah a lot of videos with that Union Pacific locomotive in my earlier videos I did make a playlist for some of those since the ones that have like less than 30 views I unlisted and put them in their own playlist so you might not see this on the channel anymore, and that's why. Yeah, surprisingly, our crack. Yeah, this one isn't cracked either. I mean, uh, I got this one used. I didn't get it new either. You know, I... It's always funny because I look at you know other people's layouts and stuff, and I'm. I'm running two Bachman controllers from like, yeah, those guys. I I don't know the technical name for them, but whatever those Bachman controllers are. <laughs> yep. I, I don't have any DCC like stuff like that. I, the only chip I have is for a, not RF-16. H-16? Ah, this one's like, I'll just pick it up. It's easier to easier to show you guys the locomotive than remember what the class is. It, yeah. It's a Baldwin diesel with a high hood. I know that's what it is. It's from the Santa Fe. It's my zebra locomotive. Mm -hmm. This one runs incredibly well. I did take the chip out of it just in case for when I'm running it on DC here. And I heard somebody sit, talking about um, Markland digital track. So does that still have the third rail in the middle? The, all the beads. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with how Marklin works with the AC current stuff, but I'm assuming that's what it is still, right? All right, let's see if I can get a tracking shot of this one. And it is a shame I can only live stream at 720p, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, so I was right about the Marklin track. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the newer Bachman controller I have, or the one that has still has the cover for the AC ports on it, the a, you know the AC power ports. I got that for like three bucks when I finally got a second line for the layout here, and so that was that was a pretty good deal. The other one, 
think in the tri in the set that I got it in was probably around ten bucks, but they work well for me, and they also can power my switches too down here. If you want to get another locomotive on the outer line, I'm not opposed to that either. You can either get the GG1 going or something like that. Or our hidden PA locomotive back here. Oh, uh, the GP20 stopped because it was on a point. It was on a switch just out of camera here. The switch is behind all the boxes. It's directly down here on the crossover. That's why it stopped. Yeah. And also, it, it has been running for a while, too. I always figure out how long these engines can run effectively just at about 40% power. <laughs> how long they can just go in a circle before I stop or before they start slowing down or something. Because normally when I'm running this layout, I do either switching operations or stuff like that. I, I'm, I think I've run, run this locomotive less than five times, maybe. This is my GP35 from the Southern Pacific. My fleet of Southern Pacific is two, but about to be three in less than a month here. And so this is a you know an Atherin blue box, so it should run well. But it does not have a box for a front coupler. And I guess I never I never run it much because it doesn't have the handrails attached. You know, it never came with them, so. Uh, I did a whole restoration on it. And this is just one of the ones that gets just, you know, slips under the radar. Have you seen the trailer park boy scenes of model trains? No, I've not, but they're hilarious. Okay, I'll look that up later then. Give that after a little bit more power. There we go. All right. Yeah, now you can see it in the background. I'm trying to do slowly over time more complex camera work just on the channel here most of my editing is pretty basic and all that stuff I want to get a little bit more complex as my videos just themselves are getting more complex you know not just a simple running session video that takes you know less than 15 minutes to shoot that was my most of you guys are too new to just be around on the channel for that long but it's just those were fun but there's only so many that you can do before they all kind of meld together a little bit. Also, something I'm astonished about is um, the price of telephone poles to buy them pre-made. I just thought about this because all of my telephone poles are, you know, used or whatever. They were out of box. And so... Zoom in on some, you know, my telephone pole is just running against the line and in between a few houses there. You can see them in the background. And I think half of them are free. The other half were like two bucks for all of them. So, you know, <laughs> practically two bucks for the entire set. And it just astonished me that new ones that look almost the same as these were like $12 in a box, like $12 for 12. Not, yeah, $12 for 12. Yeah. Uh, I believe you need 50 subscribers to stream. Yeah, because once I hit 50 subs two years ago, two years ago in the summer, I was able to start live streaming, and that's when I did my first two streams, I believe. It's been a while since I've live streamed, since this one's only number four, and the last one I did was when I had 300 subscribers, and I'm getting close to 
500 now because I'm at what 451 and two something like that. This will date the video for you guys watching this in the future. But yeah, I believe it is 50, and I thought it was 100 to post on the community po on the community tab thing. But I thought they just rolled that out for everybody almost. Because another smaller YouTube channel, uh, Level Up Model Trains, him and I have kind of been growing kind of at a similar rate to each other, with each other, you know. Early on, he had more subscribers than he, I did when he started, because he started maybe three months after I did. And so, but yeah, we've been growing pretty close to each other, and I remember he had, he hit 50 before I did, so he was able to stream before I did. And so, yeah. But then I think I was able to post in my community tab before he was. Uh, I don't have any Tyco locomotives with smoke. I do just have a Tyco Pacific in the background. Yeah. I believe my Bachman that doesn't... I think I, <laughs> my Bachman mountain type has a smoke unit, but it doesn't run. And I, don't, I don't have any smoke fluid on me either, so... If I wanted to have it smoke. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Run the Tyco. Okay. This will be your second time running today, Union Pacific. Let's see if you'll run better this time. So, I guess let's see how you do on the inner line, though. I'll let the Union Pacific diesel do one more pass, and we'll throw on the UT. Steamer. Grab a caboose as well. Let's see how well it does on the inner line here. There are 18 inch curves, or radius curves, whatever. Slow down the Southern Pacific here so it's not as loud for you guys or for me. We are now about halfway through this live stream. Only planning on doing it for about two hours here today. All right. The front coupler, yes, is a knuckle coupler, but it's sticky tech and it doesn't actually have any proper mounting. I'm going to have to grab my fun little quote-unquote conversion car, which is an AHM box car. It's coupler swing wider. The last person to own this glued the horn hook at the back. Never mind. <laughs> ah. This glued coupler makes it a lot harder. Uh, what do I run for shunting or switching? Uh, well, I guess I can show you too. Most of my switching that I do, I can either do with, to the door here. Oh. 
a sec. My <laughs> small Tyco switcher here. I can either just do it either with other diesels. Back to life. Put back to in the other direction. It makes its way over these switches fairly easily. Obviously, I do not normally switch at that speed. <laughs> Since the glue coupler uh, swings out so much, you can only run in some directions, either clockwise or counterclockwise sometimes. And so let's stick the conversion car on. Uh, oh, there. All right, I'm gonna stop the Southern Pacific. Switch it out for the German. I can enjoy my bliss and quietness. <laughs> All right. Drawer. Switch it over. I believe it's hooked up. You are going back in the drawer. And your small abode. A little bit more. Oh. Some make it over the switch, some don't. Gonna switch it to the outer line so it'll probably run better out there. Okay. It's one livestock or freight van it is in the drawer. Need to learn how to reorganize these a little bit better. There we go. All right. Livestock van and missed it. German lo locomotive. Did I fix that green gondola? Uh, I believe so. I don't understand what you. I mean, it's on the rails, right? <laughs> it has a knuckle coupler on one end and a horn hook on the other. work. Okay. 
actually got this German locomotive for free. These German couplers are not the same height with each other, so always fun to couple up. There, okay. That's on. Yeah. No, it's on the track. <laughs> no, it... It's on. must have corrected itself. Guess I can go back and look at that later. BR24, BR81, and BR89. I do not know what those look like off the top of my head, but I believe this is a BR70. Okay. Uh, I need to switch stuff onto other tracks. Nope, that way. Do that way. Yeah, there we go. Oop. The German does run better in reverse for some reason. Stop it over there. See what going on. Put it all the way over there. All right. Uh, I do have an email listed on my, not channel page, but another page on my channel, which lists contact information. All right. Switch. Switch. Now the steam locomotive on the outside should run all right, without any obstruction. All right. Okay, now the German does run better in reverse, but actually I kind of want to see how much it can actually pull since it only has one car it normally runs with. Well, I guess let's back her up. It's shorted out. There we go. All right. The German did not like switch back here. The coupler, I guess, dropped out, so it caught on the tie, and then it derailed. Back it up just a little bit more. All right. Let's see if I can jerry rig a coupling. I did put the German coupling. That goes getting a little loud. I, oop, that twisted. I put the German loop inside the wire of the knuckle coupler here. 
And so I don't know if that'll actually work as a rudimentary coupling, but we can only see. Okay, and it did. Oop. A little bit more power. There we go. And once it hits it, it hits it. There you go. Yeah. Like I said, it is a little jerky, and it will stop on a point. Yeah. But <laughs> that's pretty funny. I can. You can haul knuckle couplers. Never tried that till today. Echo, you have seen plenty of action today. Put you in your siding to rest. All right. We can run a passenger train too. We have three different options. Milwaukee Road, Santa Fe, and uh, Amtrak. Quick. Milwaukee, yeah. Nah. Milwaukee, nah. Amtrak, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, PG1, you're getting your first action of the day. Gotta take a few cars off though. Now, if you thought the, the Milwaukee was kind of cursed or, you know, I'll tell you what's even more cursed. Super liners with a GG1. Okay, I guess even the German didn't like that. That's the first time I've actually knocked the camera. At least today, you know. Amtrak then Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Milwaukee with extra baggage or just regular Milwaukee? guys sometimes just don't want to mate up. Oh. There we go. Okay. Amtrak. FF. Again, it's been a while since I've run the GG1. I'm hoping these guys swing really wide, so I'm hoping they don't hit anything. Do every single Mac Milwaukee passenger car you have. Uh, it is what one o'clock for me. One, yeah, one o'clock. I think my watch is a little off, but yeah. All right, the German is still scaring me, so I'm gonna pull that off so we can do double, double passenger train. And again, it might help if I use the right controller. Chat. How far back? How far back? Uh, quick question for five Atherin engines, four rubber band driven. A guy said it's 40 bucks. The guy selling five engines for that. Is it worth it because four of them are rubber band driven? If you have the. I'd say it's worth it if they are in decent quality and you have the facilities to use rubber band driven stuff. If you don't have spare rubber bands, then I wouldn't say go for it. But here is how I matched up the German. 
I literally just took the magnetic or the metal, you know, <laughs> hose and stuck it inside and they matched up pretty well. But This year's collection video is going to be, take a little bit longer. Got a lot more stuff. They work, and I have 100 bands to go with them. What do you think? If they're the style of locomotive you, you like, then go for it. I mean, that's a decent price. I mean, they're less than 10 bucks each. I'd, I'd go for it. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they were... Yeah, so they're like tanks, yeah. So, I mean, it, it would be worth it in my mind. All right. Do we, do we want both F units to be running forwards or one forwards and one backwards? Yes, I don't know if that was both forwards or facing opposite directions. That way? Oh, okay, both forwards, okay. Yeah. I don't know how far the chat delay is off. Yeah, they coupled up pretty easily. Wait, no. Facing opposite directions. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't found any images of this paint scheme in real life. So it's, this has always been interesting to me to see these locomotives. I did jet, I did jet, jet, jet. Drop a bogey on him. All right. Here we go. It's always fun trying to line up all these wheels. I have my bogeys wrong on the passenger car here, or the baggage car, so I'm gonna flip them around. Uh, all right, and then I think we are ready. I picked up this entire set of four cars for I think 27 bucks a few years ago. Road going off running trains while watching trains. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Now we got both of them running. All right. Now let's try to. Hell, oh, they pulled down a tree. 
Yeah, I'm going to... No, 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 no. Alright. I'm gonna see what's all wrong. One telephone pulled down. Um, I need a Hiawatha. Yeah, I, I might need a Hiawatha. Um, they are really good look, looking locomotives. Okay. Somehow snagged a tree. Knocked down a signal. Decided to explode to the railway tracks. Dining car seems to be all right. And the observation car seems to be all right. <laughs> well, your chat's a little late for that. <laughs> Yeah, that chat delay is sometimes a little annoying. All right. Okay, I'm going to run around slowly for a few laps and see what happens then. I might have to take that box car off. <laughs> Let the GG1 rest for a little bit while I figure out if anything else is going to go bad. About 40 minutes left in the live stream in total. There we go. Alright. There. Came off again over there. One of these axles always falls out. I forgot to put it back in, so the coupler is tilted up, and it's having some issues and clipping into things. Car off because that keeps the railing. Okay. Now let's see if it wants to go. Already on couple. Twice. Now let's go. <laughs> All right now. Let's do that, do one lap, and then I'm going to refill my water. So I'll leave it be and see what happens. Everything went well. Alright, it's still going. 
Oh, this is HO scale. Uh, I don't think I have anything double O technically. Yeah, it's HO scale. Thanks. That dude in chat just said it too. I believe O scale is, or sorry, double O scale is really just Britain, as far as I know. A lot of Australian local model trains I've seen that are, uh, they're HO too, so like, it's just interesting in that own way. <laughs> It's still running all right. There we go. Let's just go. The funny thing is, for the guy, the model transit. All right, it's good to hear about getting those engines. All right, I think I can get the GG1 back up and running again, too. All right, a little bit faster. GG1s aren't that slow. They're currently being shipped. I cannot wait. Yeah. I know. I always love that feeling of getting something new in the mail. A lot of my trains.com things are some of the best things I have on the layout. For instance, this GP30 is a Bachman Spectrum. I got off trains.com for a good price. You know, the handrails are nice. They're all in shape and all that. It's one of the smoothest runners, it's super strong. I mean, that's one of the better Bachman products I have that I didn't buy new. I mean, the only new model train I have is that GG1 that's running around on the layout. And at this point, it's, geez, it's almost three years old. I didn't think about that. I got it in 2021. Yeah. I would say my best runner probably is, coincidentally, another Bachman Spectrum. Is this RF-16? But I, I thought that was the name of the shark noses. Can't remember what it's technically called. I, I can look at the box and I'll find out what it is. But it's something 16, standing for 1600. Uh, how many engines do I have? Um, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23 or 24 running locomotives. Uh, there's a one dummy unit in there, and well, that's the one dummy unit. And I guess it would be 22, 22 running locomotives. Three of them are non running, so it'd be 25 in total then. Oh, yeah. 26 in total. Forgot I had this guy off to the side. Seems to be a, probably a lot more. Oh, it's good to hear about the handrails on that engine, on those engines. If I'm not talking loud enough, don't be afraid to say something. All right, about 30 minutes or so left on the live stream here. If you want to throw in some new locomotives, you sure can. Count of mine, almost 40, yeah. I mean, I've, I've technically been collecting ever since I was in second grade. But I, that doesn't technically count because I only had 
two pieces of rolling stock for like five years, and then I actually got more rolling stock, and then I finally got an engine, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first two pieces of rolling stock I ever got was the Atherin Extended Height Boxcar and a Monsanto Hopper by Lifelike. Yep, yes. I have to say. Yeah. I'm assuming your Marklins are new, too. I haven't had this, I got this slam in 20, it wasn't 2020. I got this table in 2022, I think. Wait. Yeah, yes, I had rolling stock for a few years before not having any engines. But I mean, I was, you know, I, I went to a train show with my dad and we were, you know, I was really young. <laughs> I guess he was too, and a little bit younger then too. And with my own money, I bought those two things. And yeah, it didn't have any track, didn't have any engines, and I mean, they they sat out of their box, you know, on my shelf, kind of. I believe got my first layout in 2018. 2018, that was my first circle layout. I still have all the track from that. I don't use it anymore. Yeah, this, this table's either, it can't be 20, it's gonna be 2020. Yeah, this table's what, three years old now. I have old ones too, converted to digital, and I'll like, well they work full speed on digital track, yeah. Yep. I got this layout. Was, yeah, I hear a lot about getting layouts like stuff for that. Right place, right time for a lot of those. The uh, the uh, NMRA group that I'm in, you know, some of them are you know older guys too, and they're they're getting out of the hobby, or some of them sadly pass away. So some of the people get layouts and stuff like that. Yep. So yeah, that's a good way to start the hobby too. <laughs> All right, if we want to get another train running, we can. We can get probably my nicest free engines that I got out. Those are the strongest engines I've ever had. Yeah, so we can change it. Yeah, only started with Yeah, what really truly got me into the model train stuff, aside from just owning a few pieces of rolling stock, I mean, was uh, Sam Strames. Oh, Sam, Sam. <laughs> Can't get it out. Sam's Trains, and so that really got me into it. It was funny on the British side because, you know, OO scale looks so much different. You know, the, the proportions aren't right to the stuff that I always had, especially, I guess, it was British, too. And so a lot of my railroading dialect refers, you know, from the British way of saying it. Switches or points or other things like that, too. You know, it, it can be used interchangeably, but I never thought about that stuff, you know. Pilot and cow catcher, sometimes those get confused. Alright, I think I'm going to change out the GG1 to something. If we want to run the other two Santa Fe cars, we can. Yeah. Alright. All right, GG1. Thank you. I am. If the price of them goes down, like they have sometimes, I might get another GG1. I'm thinking of getting Penn Central, a black one. I like the look of those ones. You know, it'd be nice to have a nice contrast because they would have run together at the same times almost. All right, let's take these superliners off. You know, these superliners are, there's no interior, so they're super lightweight. 
We can run the Santa Fe passenger set, or we can run the Campbell Soup train. That one's a fun one to run. You know, a while back, I've just... I've seen this locomotive before, but I finally got it. And so, it's based off a soup company here, but yeah. And then, I think for 50 bucks, maybe I got the whole set of cars that goes along with them. I do have one Tyco car, because this is lifelike, and so... The type of car technically doesn't go into the set. I forgot this one has traction tires too. You know, it's not a heavy engine, but it can still pull a decent amount. Alright. Now got them all in the box. Or in a, in a drawer here. Alright, let's start. Warm the engine up a little bit by driving. Okay. Let's go. Spaghetti-o. Quick. And the soup. Swanson Frozen Meals. Yes, they're all like the brands. There we go. Uh, chunky soups. Let's see. Let's drive a little bit forward so we can fit a few more. Not retractable, that's probably. No plastic parts, that's nice. Here, the, the caboose. There we go. All right. Well, my longest steam engine—it's decided to explode its own gears, so it won't be running today. But the longest train. Run the. One for the Milwaukee one. Switch it out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to need to look into that Campbell's engine a little bit more. It's a little worn out on the inside. All right. But I can pull off the Milwaukee one here. So let's just stop that. Nope. I reversed it. My longest train that I can possibly run is with my strongest engine I have, obviously. <laughs> and that would be my Erie Built. Erie Built. That was a close call. Sorry, I'll show you. I set the dummy unit down and uh, drove out, took a plunge. How big is my layout? My layout is five by eight. It's not four by eight, it's five by eight. Eight feet. Um, well, I don't know what that is in meters. Not two and a half by, not two and a half. Yeah, about, about two and a half meters by one and a half meters. So it's not the standard size, it's a little bit larger. Uh, yeah, I want it to be a little bit deeper so that it didn't just have, either end was just true solid curves. Because you can see over there, just like I'll zoom in, how it goes diagonal for a bit. So that's a little too far. 
and it curves and goes diagonal before going around to the actual curves. And so I wanted that more room to work with. And so that's why I went for that size. All right, longest train, longest train, or more, most cursed train, I guess. Pull her out of the shed here. This, oh, that, I was wrong. This is a Fairbanks Morris. Okay. The other one that I said earlier was a Baldwin is actually a Fairbanks Morris as well. I forgot, I forgot the manufacturer of this. But this is a Proto 2000, that's the manufacturer of the model here. And so this is the strongest locomotive I have. It also has a B unit, which is also powered. And that is incredibly strong too. I guess I'll pull that out. I mean, it's a full length B unit, it's not a smaller one. Yeah, I mean your most cursed one. I'm trying to think of something that's cursed, too. That's what I mean. Yeah, you know what? This will be cursed. I'll, I'll put the A unit away. We'll run it with the B unit. B unit. Just a second. I'm going to have to grab a switcher. Switcher. I haven't done this experiment in a while. But here we go. They're not coupling up. Sick. There you go, temperamental. Gotta turn you around then. Hopefully this couple will start. Straight up the issue. Alright, see the logs? Now you don't. And you know why? Boom. Most cursed. Now I gotta get a conversion car. Uh, should be one sitting right here. Ah, there it is. This works even better. Santa Fe conversion car. Just gotta keep that Santa Fe theme. Go ahead and knuckle the horn hook. Missile. This will make it cursed as well. A Tyco oil tanker that is missing its middle axles. Yeah, it's missing its middle axles. And it'll be pushing Open up this coupler again. Okay, it'll just be pushing a track cleaning car. And for its caboose, Amtrak. All right, you wanted cursed. This is the most cursed thing I could think of in a matter of a few minutes. There you go. Let this beauty run. Oh, watch it. Yeah, I mean, we only got 15 more minutes of this live stream. So, we <laughs> might as well let it. All right, let's track it. Track cleaning car, B unit. 
the switcher, the missile, and a fuel tanker missing a few wheels. On uh, top of all that, Amtrak. <laughs> I mean, dude, you asked for the most cursed thing I could think of. A barely known Fairbanks Morris model. I, I bet half railroaders don't know what that is. Because they only made, like, 20 of them. <laughs> Pushing a track cleaning car, hauling a fictional switcher with a, a ballistic missile right next to a tanker and a fictional Amtrak caboose. I mean, I don't know what can make this really more cursed. <laughs> Aside from adding, like, something Campbell's-wise on that. I guess I could have, uh, I could have added a crane car as well. <laughs> Here we go. There, that's even better. The crane car to the front. I have no idea what abomination I've just allowed on this earth. Let's get another shot of this coming by. I don't like that sound. I hear something rattling. Something's so derailed. Okay, right at itself. Yeah, I was about to try to fix it, but it fixed itself. All right, now, if we want to swap out the Campbells, we can. We can swap out other things, too. No, I actually didn't have to stop it. <laughs> My computer is cursed now. <laughs> well, I guess you guys saw what happened. <laughs> yep. Hey, the Fairbanks Morris has so much torque, uh, it's hard to stop it with your actual hands. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You try, if you try to launch that rocket, um, uh, some bad things are going to happen. But also, uh, the rocket, you take it off, it fits so well on the rails. I mean, it's, it glides pretty, pretty evenly across the rails. But yeah, now I'm going to try to fix what the most cursed train ever. All right, I'm going to stop the Tycho, too, because I can hear that he wants a break. There we go. Now we're back to silence. <laughs> All right. Pick up the... <laughs> the most cursed thing that some people have seen and probably will see for the next three weeks. No guarantees that you will see something worse. Or, <laughs> yeah, I still thought that, yes, that is the Cox missile car, I believe, technically. But it is a, well, it's a Bachman product, and I've seen, but it looks very similar to the, yeah, that other missile. Just we can keep it running, just as long as you don't have the stuff in front of it. Yeah, I know. I'm honestly surprised the switch has stayed on there that well. I mean, it is leaning a little bit, but I, I, I have tried that before, so I know why the switcher stays on at least decently. But yeah, actually, no, there's not enough room. I was like, I, I was thinking about adding the small hustler. I was like, there's not enough room to fit that on there too. But no, you can see it just like around the curve. You can see it tilting, <laughs> tilting, tilting out. I'm gonna 
try to fix that too. <laughs> but no, I've seen that one, just that B unit. I've had cars all the way on this line and all the way on this line and crossing over on the crossover track. Let's say the engine's here, so it's pulling all of the cars and it will just pull them flawlessly. Yeah, 12 wheel drive with a chunky motor on the inside and just tons of die cast on it because it doesn't have to fit anything for the nose or any detail in the nose like the A unit does to where it can just pull whatever it wants really. It also looks nice too. It's just, it's a little funky of a shape, you know, because it doesn't look like an, an E unit's B unit. Uh, well, that's a weird sentence to come out of my mouth. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to pack up the cam bells now. I believe the set was released in 1983, so I think that's why. Does it have that number on it? Or 82, there we go. 1982. If we want to get another locomotive up and running, we can. What do I do with my tr trio engine? It runs, but there's smoke coming out of from the motor. What do you think it could be? Uh, have you opened up the motor to see if there's any grease or oil in places it shouldn't be? That would be the first thing I would check. If not, uh, make sure you have wires not touching in the wrong places. Just make sure stuff that shouldn't be oiled are oiled. Oh, Tyco. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I never know what Trio is. <laughs> Tyco, Tyco, Tyco. Okay. Uh, is it a power torque or is it a like an actual decent Tyco? I can't remember what the ones are before. Is it Tyco Mantua or is it just Tyco? Is there's a difference in how they're built. Wow, it's still running strong. Okay. It's Tyco Mantua. Okay, Tyco Mantua. Uh, hopefully it's not like mine because mine has rivets in it, but it's a power... Oh, it's a power torque. Oh. It's just like... <clears throat> power torque. I don't have too much experience with those. The I have two of them. I got one of them to work. The other one is sitting... I'll just show you. It's a lovely body, but it's... In a box. Oh, no. Why is Tyco power torque? No, no. Yeah. Tyco power torques have these six wheels on the bottom. So if yours has the six wheels, then it's that. Yeah, those are fun to work with. But, yeah. What should I do with the power torque? The power torques are easier to open up. I, I mean, watch something about SMT Mainline. He knows more stuff about that. Yeah, I've had experience, and one of them I've just given up on because I'm like, I'm not dealing with that anymore. And so, yeah. <laughs> the other one runs decently, but uh, if you were here earlier, it literally was just, this is not it, but it was just spinning in place. You know, I had a train behind it, and it was just spinning i touch it and it would rock it off. But the second I lifted my finger, it would slow down. Just needed more weight or something in it. Yeah, well, it's... Yeah, I... Yeah, check the oil. Check some other things. Check how much power you're giving to it when you're testing it. That can make a difference, too. Yeah. Still going well, wow. Just letting it in the background.
I'm still surprised about that train just running all right. All right. Well, speaking of all right, I'm going to probably do about four more minutes on this live stream here, so I'm going to start wrapping some things up a little bit. I've been doing this for almost two hours now. <laughs> been a lot of fun, but I need to pick up and do some other things that I got to do today. I probably won't have a video out this week. I don't have anything planned. I don't, you know, I haven't shot anything that I need to do. So this, this was what I was going to do in substitution. All right, I got to hop off anyway. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for taking my crust. Well, thanks for giving them. You know, sometimes I'll be here and I won't get that many requests, so it's kind of funny where I have to make up my own stuff. So it's nice to have somebody, you know, who's enjoying the trains too. Thank you so much. And I'm surprised this train is still on its tracks all right. That is, this will go down in history. It's probably the most cursed train I've ever built or put together. But there's a reason why I get some fun cars like that, like the missile. I have no idea when the next live stream will be. When I have free time to do this for like an hour or two hours, that's probably when, but that's not a real date. I'm hoping within the next two months. Hoping at least, yeah, once a month, I'm hoping maybe. If I can fit one in. But my schedule is still kind of crazy because I'm in school and stuff like that. So when I have free time, I'll try to do all this. Yep, thanks to you. Thanks, you guys, for watching again. Yeah. Gone through three glasses of water throughout this entire live stream <laughs> and talking so much. It's important to stay hydrated. Yep, bye-bye. Yeah, see you next time. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too cold in Finland. <laughs> Oop, I got to fix that. Oop, that was about bad. That was about to be real bad. <laughs> Set this diesel back in. All right, and then I will wrap up this live stream. Not now, but zero degrees. I'm assuming that means Celsius, right? That's always funny. Yeah, Celsius, yep. <laughs> Always going to be different. All right. We'll let the train do one more stop here, and then I will wrap up this live stream. It's about almost two hours here, and that's what I planned on doing, 120 minutes. So we'll let our little like zoom in, our cursed train come right in front of us, and I'll just say goodbye. Try to stop this in shot here. I don't know how well it looks because I'm kind of far away from the camera. I think most of that in shot. Yeah, there we go. That's decent. All right, like, thank you guys so much for watching. And I had really fun, a lot of fun with this live stream. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Gotta figure out how to stop this. Yes, do you want to end streaming? All right, bye bye, guys. See you next time.